Hey everybody, today we have an Optima GT1080 to look at. You can see it has the uh, regulatory number there, but that's a GT1080. This was sent in by a viewer who uh, had purchased a few lamps for it and none of them have worked. So they asked me to take a look. So the first thing we're going to do before I power it up is just double check the lamp, see what kind of lamp is in here, and if there's anything I'm worried about, let's make sure it has a decent brand lamp inside. Oh god, it's totally a generic lamp, which I guess isn't awful in itself, but what is this? One of those, oh... It's one of those Ludo, Ludoma or something, knockoff lamps. Don't buy these. I mean, you know, you, you got to buy what you can afford. But these are not good lamps. I'm going to show you. And I think the uh, lens coating... No good. No lens coating. Actually, I'm going to check it on my little box. But so far, fail. Oh yeah, Ludema. These are junk. Don't buy these. It's not a real lamp. It's a knockoff company out of China. It's not an Osram. This should be an Osram. And it's not. That's a, it's a garbage lamp, honestly. I, I, I'll put it back in because the, the customer owns it, but I, I'm going to let him know, too. This is really just a junk lamp. See this? Look. That shouldn't be able to happen. Um, it's just a... They're not good. It's a, it's a fake bulb, basically. Um, the lens has fingerprints all over it. Not good. Let me go get something to wipe that off. This is what should be in there. It is a real Osram. Let's see. I don't know if this is the right wattage. I think this is 220. So I think that's the wrong wattage for this. But such a better, much better bulb or lamp or whatever you want to call it. Um... This coating, actually that coating might be all right. Now that I wiped it off, I can kind of see it, and that might be all right. But this is no good, look. <laughs> it's just like everything's kind of, for lack of a better term, uh, half-assed. Like that, that's gonna let all kinds of dust in. Uh, it's not good, it's not a good lamp. Don't buy these. Don't buy Ludema. They're junk. Don't buy Ludema. Ludema is junk. Do you want Osram or Philips? Got a Philips around. I don't have a Philips over here. But you want Osram, Philips, Ushio, Phoenix. That's it. Anything else is a pure waste of your money. But anyway, for purposes here we will put this back together and then we'll try it in the projector I'm kind of wondering though if maybe the this is the issue uh, i do have another known good lamp housing we could put in and i might do that depending on what happens next i can't figure out why they put a Wait, this screw was in the top. Look. That's a coarse thread. A coarse thread screw going into metal. I mean, that's just uh, so cheaply made. These are junk. They probably pay, my guess is the sale cost or the cost on one of these is about 25 or 30 bucks, maybe, tops. And they turn around and sell them for 60 or 80 or something like that. But 
don't buy these. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. As I plug it back into the projector. <laughs> That's okay. We're going to see if this comes on. And if it does, if uh, we get any kind of light. Let's plug that in. I'll latch that down. Uh, where's the door? Oh, the door switch is on the far side. Right there. Let's see. Do I have something I can... No. Here we go. I'll go that way. And we'll get our power cord. On the side, we have our standby. That's good. And power. Let's give you guys a more top down look. Ooh. You hear that? You hear that? See, we have some light. But get ready. Oof, that sounds bad. Yeah. Hear the color wheel? <laughs> That's bad. So, I think we found... Ooh, I can feel that vibration. All right, let's unplug it. Get my little thingy out. We'll leave the uh, we'll leave the lamp housing in for now. Let me unhook this uh, lens cover though. I hate flipping these around with the lens cover on top. I'm going to use the lens cap as a screw holder. this top off. Let's get it started. Getting those first those first few clips is tricky. There's one. You guys can kind of see it right here. That one. It's another one here. Come on. There we go. All right. So this this ran hot. It only has one fan. And these chassis are just it's really neat how these are built. So let's take the lamp that lamp housing out. Our Ludema. Bleh. A little bit of dust. It's really not too bad. So the color wheel is here, of course. Let's see. Is it easy to get out? I think so. Now, I did figure out that you can remove these without taking this whole thing out. But I've had a really hard time getting it to happen reliably. So I'm going to try it again this time and see if it works. I kind of don't think it will, but like I said, we're going to try. So I'm going to plug the uh, door switch. Let me, let me 
So to take out the wheel, I should be able to take these two. Maybe this one will work out. Like I, I couldn't get the other one to like lift and move. See, here's the shroud. See that it's supposed to just come up and back. Oh no, that's got the wheel. The wheel's attached to it. See those screws? So that's the whole assembly. It's supposed to tilt back and come up. It's not. Let me see if I take this screw out, if that gives it the clearance. Hmm. Nope. Let's try taking the index sensor off. See, I know the fella swore that it would work that way, but I am just not... It's not doing it for me. That thing's just hanging up in there. There's a uh, light tunnel screw it's sticking on. All right, I'm not taking a chance of breaking it because we might be able to salvage this wheel. So I'm going to take those screws out that hold this down. And we're going to lift this up just a little bit and it'll be enough to get it to clear. So unfortunately, even though the fella had the best intentions, being able to take the color wheel out without removing these screws is does not seem, oh, that broke. That plastic down there is no good. Now we're gonna take that screw out. Take the unplug the lamp wire. No, not easily. Let's just unstrap the lamp wire. There we go. Ah, my face fell off. So this is going to need some love anyway. This thing must have gotten really hot, probably because of that cruddy Ludima bulb. Come on, unscrew. And then here's the uh, plastic that dried out and crumbled. So there's gonna be one less screw going back in. That guy right there, but that's all right. It's got plenty of other ones. Uh, one more screw down here. So there's a bunch of screws to take out for that. See, this is what I was trying to do. I was trying to lift and then do that. But the uh, light tunnel screws kept hitting and preventing this from moving enough to lift it up and out. So now we're going to look and see that the index mark is missing. See? It should be right there. And you see that? That's supposed to be clear. Man, this thing got hot. Let's unplug the lamp and set that out of the way. And then this is our index sensor that is missing the mark. I'm gonna see if I can find that mark I always like looking for those. Oof, look how that plastic melted. 
Man. I wonder if this has a bad vent. Because not tell you how terrible that looks. Let's see. Lamp goes in here and the air blows in through there. But if this is dirty, that'll cause it to uh, be unhappy. We got all kinds of bent stuff in here. Melted, rather. There, looking for the, uh, see if we can locate the index mark. Nope, just some squishy plastic. I might see if we can fix this though, at least for testing purposes. And then we're definitely going to get a uh, replacement. But I'm going to show you how I like to fix the index marks on these because we'll fix the index mark, <clears throat> pardon me, and then uh, verify everything works. And then I'll contact the customer and see if we're okay with uh, replacing the color wheel or if um, that's not what they want to do. I imagine they will. Man, that rubber is sticking. Let me see that, that rubber grommet. That's not supposed to uh, stick. Let's put that rubber grommet that goes back in here. Mix these up. All right. So it doesn't feel very good when I try to spin it. It doesn't feel terrible, but it doesn't feel good. So let's uh, let's actually separate that from the motor. Now I did do this in another video, so it's not totally new. But what I'm going to do is put a uh, pair of flatheads on opposite sides that are going to lean on the magnet. And then we're going to twist and that should pop the uh, motor free. And then I can easily get to where the index mark should be and replace that. There we go. See there's a little that little thing locks it in. There's the motor hub. Sometimes I think what happens is the magnet in here goes bad and the heat. That one doesn't feel too bad. the inside out first. A little bit of crud, not too bad. Now, let's see if this will clean up. That one segment should be clear. That's just Windex, by the way. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. That was um, translucent. Man. We are still going to replace this, but this will get it cleaned up enough so that we can verify that when I put a new, uh, when I replace the index mark, that everything will work okay.
All right, so now the index mark is that little spot right there. And it is, as you can see, it's on the blue segment. You can kind of see through. So it starts at the beginning of the blue segment and goes about three quarters of the way through. The way across. <clears throat> now I have this tape. It's uh, they call it transformer tape. It's just black, high temperature. It's kind of like Kapton tape, I think, but it's uh, black. So what we will do, because I have tried electrical tape, and electrical tape will get you up and running. Uh, a lot of the times, but I've had poor luck with it in the long term. So we're going to pull off a piece, that yay long. And then, let me see if it's too wide. No, almost, but not quite. So we're going to look, oh, we need that now. It's really close. It needs to be a little more narrow. go oh almost now the the job of the index mark is to not reflect the infrared light from the sensor so in theory you could use a few different types of things to do that um, I've thought about trying you know, high temperature paint, things like that. Um, but so far, the best results I've had besides a new color wheel is this uh, transformer tape. So I'll put that on there. That should do it. That'll line up with the uh, sensor just right. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's pop it back together. Just put it in there and you'll hear it. Ready? There we go. That'll do it. So it's cleaner now. Um, it's probably still not going to last very long, but for testing, I'm sure it'll be fine. So now let's get this and let's put it back together. Let's see that went out the side. I still can't get over how much that clear segment cleaned up. Alright, that'll be good. And let's just put a, we'll use a little bit of CA glue, <clears throat> which while not ideal for high temperatures, it, it does work for the most part. So I'm just going to put a little bit. Probably too much, honestly. See, this thing 
this is that's the back side of it that used to be here like that it's kind of like foil tape just a little thicker and its job is to reflect light so that it doesn't heat the metal up it's kind of like a shield See, and that's how I expected it to come out, was like that, but with the, uh, the light tunnel and the light tunnel adjustment screws, that wasn't going to happen. So now, let's put our color wheel back on this bracket, and then you can put it back in the projector, and then... I'll drop the uh, blue Tama lamp in that I don't like, and uh, we'll see what happens. Make sure that index mark is fully seated. I didn't really push on the front. Yeah, I like it. They balance these with that mark on, so a lot of that vibration may have been, probably not. It may have been because of the mark not being there. Let's send you guys back out. Let's plug back in. Color wheel sensor. And where's that color wheel sensor screw? Uh, there it is. All right. Now we'll get the uh, lamp housing assembly and we'll plug the uh, let's plug the lamp output back in yeah I don't see any melting on that one inductor that's good and then set that all up there so it's not in the way that's going to roll over the top Let me uh, get that, that bad screw out. There we go. <sighs> All right. That one's down. Actually, I think I put the wrong screw in there. Nope, it's the right one. I want to make sure there's a long one that you don't want to put in there. You can 
and see those are different sizes so we got to be careful Okay, so I, I had it slightly backwards, and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so like I said, we have a short and a long. The short actually goes in the color wheel bracket because that is going into the bottom of the projector. So there's not much space and since that plastic's very brittle from being hot, I gotta be extra careful with that. Like I actually felt those kind of make little crunchy noises when I tighten them down, so I didn't go too tight. Yeah, I mean it won't matter, it'll be fine, but you know, I wanna do it right. So then let's let's loop this back through. that over and we'll plug the fan in. Just tuck that back in there where it was. Okay. Then we'll get the lamp I don't like. Seriously guys, don't buy lamps on Amazon, please. Not just for my sake, but for the sake of your projectors, please think of the projectors. Anybody who watches, watches Mark Novak knows what I mean. All right, that's good. Uh, a little more plastic. Let's plug this back in. And let's see. Let's see if it comes on enough to give us a picture. It's all on. It's just snapped on. I don't have any screws in yet. So let's see if I can pull that switch. Yep, that should work. Yeah. All right, now let's get the power cord. All right, ready? Fingers crossed. What do you guys say? Pause it and put something in the comments that says, I think it'll work uh, with the timestamp. And then whoever's right gets an imaginary cookie. And there we go. Yeah, it's still noisy, vibrating, so it will have to be replaced. But it's staying on, and more importantly, oof, God, that lamp is terrible. That is, oof, this thing's a piece of junk. Look how dim that is. That should be way brighter, even with the lamp warning. Let's see, lamp settings, what was the hours, yeah I want the lamp reminder on, I'm going to see what the hours are, where is it, oh there it is, down the bottom, 
4666. Oh, no, 4966, 4998. So they ran some in Eco, most in Bright, which is the way to go. So let's, let's reset that in case that has an effect on the brightness, but I don't see why it would. Zero hours. All right. So this lamp is awful. Um, but it also needs a color wheel. So I'm going to talk to the owner and see what they want to do. I'm really going to recommend he returns that for a refund if possible. And if not, such as life, I might see if I can find him a good lamp to put inside that housing, though. Because that's nowhere near bright enough. I should be blinded by just that amount of light coming out right now. And that's terrible. So, anyway. And we're back. Either this is part two. Or this is still part one. And I've edited it all together. Because through the magic of video, the color wheel has arrived. All the way from uh, China. I think that's where this one came from. Let's see here. Let's save that box, actually. That's a nice box for storing my uh, test color wheel. There's the new one. Ready to go. Here is the original. That's the one I took out that had the uh, index mark fly off that we put on. It spins all right, but just not great. My, my bigger worry is all this stuff, the way it's burned. <coughs> so I'll probably keep this one too. Because maybe I'll find a good hub. I can switch the hub. Let's wrap that up here. Now I'm going to put the one that's inside into this bag. Because the one that's in there is used, but still pretty good. It had very low hours on it. that loose set that over here the uh, the fellow is also okay with swapping that out uh, those Ludema things are just they're awful don't don't buy Ludema you know how often we talk about buying a decent quality lamp please buy a decent quality lamp these are not decent quality whatever this is wait is this uh Oh, I think this is the same thing as that. Yeah, it is. Wow, it's been a run on these. Optima must really have sold a lot of these. Because here's that... From that uh, HD26. Here's that housing from the HD26. So you can see how they're, you know, how they're the same. Now, he can't return this as far as I know. So what I'm going to try to do is see if I have a, uh, a bear lamp we can use for them. Pretty sure I do. I'm going to look around a little, but I'm almost positive I have a new one we can use. So we'll do that after. Yeah, because it does have a good ND filter on the front. So let's see if we can get that guy out before we had to loosen all of those fasteners because the, uh, the, uh, blah, 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 come on brain, because this won't tilt and come out on its own. Let's just store that there. Unplug that. I can leave that. What I was really hoping is I could just take just the plastic out with the wheel and not have to fully remove this but I think the last few times I've tried it really wasn't an option let's just try one more time because it's very loose it's so close it's like like you, you want to 
bend it a little, you know, like give it a little flex, but you also don't want to break it. So yeah, see, it's, it's so close. So, so, so close, but that's all right. We just have uh, a few screws to loosen. Cause that one down there went bad. The little, um, socket that the screw goes into that plastic was just too far gone so that just leaves us with i think two screws holding that down yep oh, it's so close There's a couple screws. Here, I'll zoom you guys in actually. Down in here. That one. I'm actually going to leave that one out because that's going right back in as soon as I get this loose. And then there's one more down. Nope, got that one. Oh, that one had a bad, had a bad problem too. There we are. In fact, you can kind of see, I'm going to plug this. If you look here, that's melted plastic where the plastic actually bent. So that's how hot this got. Set that back a little bit. Let's bring this color wheel over. This was the test wheel, if you remember. This is the one that was, uh, I think I pulled that out of a UF-65. Uh, smart. And it wasn't... Uh, it was the right one. It wasn't the wrong wheel. It was... I was surprised. It seems to be a pretty popular configuration. So we're definitely going to save it. Alright. Got it. Fold. That so it'll fit through. Here we are. Where'd that bag? There it is. Let's get the bag that they ship that in. Let's slide this inside so that we don't anything happen. There we are. good one and then that's the bad one although actually I'm gonna see if he wants that back if he doesn't want that back I'll throw it in the box but if he does want it back then you know it's obviously his I don't own it but let's just mark this on here G T 80 U F 65 I was looking to see if we had another part number, but do it this way. It's, uh, let's see. Oh, wait, that's beat. <laughs> and then, let's see, I like to. Here, 
blue, red, yellow, green, cyan. I just write that on there. That'll help me. All right. Let's get my screwdriver. All right. Now we can feed. Oh. Actually, I'll clean that out. <sighs> Make sure that looks good. Make sure that was clean. Now we're going to feed the wire through that slot. It should just kind of line up. Tighten these down. It's good. I like it. Happy, happy. All right, so to put it back in, lift up just a little bit. There we are. Set it in on an angle. That all back down. Let's put the uh, let's put the these screws back in first. Wow. <sighs> that looks like it's shredded. I think all that plastic down there is bad. Yeah, we're gonna leave that out actually, because any plastic that's cracked. Or damaged is just going to give us the chance of having a loose screw. So this one down here is okay. So do the same thing. We we'll go backwards until it drops, and then we'll just bring it down until it snugs up. Really, once the top is on, it's being pushed down anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And then. Let's see if you guys can see in there that one right there same thing backwards until it drops take it down until it stops there we are then our color wheel screws I should say the the metal bracket that holds the color wheel screws because the color wheel screws are going in next so that one then let's make sure that's down all the way it is there's that little kind of pin that they sit into that one's down and last one going to be blue this way which is right so let's actually do it this way let's put the color wheel wire in that little gap first and let me just position here we are let me put the tape back on now Put the connector it's gonna go in there so I'm gonna peel that tape back set it there are 
and that tape just kind of helps keep that connector in there. So that's in. Then our color wheel sense wire. There we are. That's good. So the color wheel is now officially installed. Now, now the problem, well, I'm going to clean this a little more too. I see this power supply is pretty dusty. I'll hit that with some air. I might even go full pressure. Maybe. We'll see. But the next thing I want to do is we're going to deal with this lamp assembly. Let's, let's take it apart. These are really popular. Oh, this is that one that had the weird, had the weird screw. Look, they put a, uh, a coarse thread and that's going into what should be a fine thread. And that's what happens with cheap equipment though. Let me see if that will even take a fine thread after that because they may have mangled that hole. Kind of. Uh, well, we'll probably use that wrong screw in there because that's how it's set up. Now let's... Wow, that screw is stripped. That screw was really stripped. All right, well, we'll take the little ones out then. You usually only have to take out half of the clips on one side, then loosen the other, and then it'll move. I'll tell you what, I'm kind of thinking of using that other housing I have. There we are. Pull that together. See, that's what I was thinking of doing is finding something else. Because holy, look at that. What a piece of junk. Let's check the wires. Wires look okay. Pop them off. I'm going to save this because that's just interesting. All right, let me go get a uh, barrel lamp. I'll be right back. And there we go. I do have one. So let's pop it in. And where did I put my screwdriver? There we go. And then let's see this one. You know, we'll just look at how poorly constructed this is. Look how that metal's all bent funny. Like, they didn't line it up with the tabs properly. That's supposed to be in there and grabbing that, that little tab so it can't move. Dummies. Don't buy cheap projector lamps. Oh, just to be clear, you guys aren't the dummies. The dummies are the ones who are building and trying to sell these. Oh. There we are. Much better. These are just stripped. Look at that. If I was really going to redo this, I'd tear those out with a uh, pair of needle nose or something, or I'd just replace the whole housing. 
I'm going to tighten those down a little bit. Hopefully without overly crushing it. Just a little squeeze. Oh yeah, way better. Just a little bit, that's all you need. Because you want to be able to, you know, essentially do that. I wouldn't recommend doing that all the time, but if you really want to make sure, that's one way you'll know for sure that it's not going to come apart. Alright, now we can put the housing back together, and we'll put it in, and then we'll probably be in good shape. I think, uh, I think the owner will be getting this back um, right after this, actually. like these just kind of come in in piles. down. Pretty. So that'll go here and there and all that fun stuff. So let's get the projector back out. I'm taking this terrible sticker off. I hate this sticker because it's a lie. No quality check happened. Take that off. There's a good quality mark. Alright, maybe not the best drawing, but you get the idea. Good, and let's snug this down. Actually, I'm gonna go get my good Wii. I actually brought it back in. There we go. I missed my good screwdriver. I mean, these are, you know, Craftsman used to be a good brand, and back when this was made, it was still a good brand. Remember that when stuff was made in the USA? If, uh, if our government would subsidize manufacturing a little more and maybe change some of those right to repair laws, we could do that again. But honestly, I don't blame people having stuff made overseas because it's not cost effective otherwise. But that's a rant for a totally different video. For now, let's just make sure this works. So we're gonna pull that back. Let's get the keyboard wire. Pardon me. Get the keyboard wire, plug that in. Down in there. Yep, that's good. Oh, we gotta get that focus lined up. Oh no, that's part of it. That's cool. Oh, actually, let me, let me hit this with some air first. There we go. Remember there was some kind of in there. And in here. And also, the connectors were pretty packed, so that's all clear now, too. And there's a little bit of broken plastic just from that old, dried-out, cracked plastic. I wanted to get all that out. And hopefully, the uh, optic assembly is okay. We're going to try it first, and I'll see if any... Uh, because, I mean, there was a decent amount of dust in this at one time, so it wouldn't be all that unrealistic to uh, think some may have gotten in here. So let's plug, plug this in. All right.
And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to 3D print one of these because I need something for testing, you know? So if I can recreate that, that'd be a perfect tool. So I am definitely going to 3D print that at some point. So we'll do, uh, maybe I'll do a thing on that. Ah, that little plastic bit or metal bit they don't use on this one. Curious. Anyway, let's put that on. Snug that in. And let's get some power because we need to make sure it turns on. Stand by, and hopefully we hear good noises. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's like, I don't see Optima. It's coming up. see if we can I want to see what this is if this is set at a uh, standard or what brightness mode is bright that's good oh actually now that it's warmed up it looks pretty good let's get a, a test pattern there we are big old grid that's nice. All right, I'm going to bring this over to the test area, and we'll see what it looks like. Make sure that DMD is good. Okay, I have it set up, um, but <laughs> it doesn't quite fit on the screen. This is a short throw. And uh, it's lighting up the ceiling very nicely. So I'm going to run some video on this. I'll put my uh, fireplace video on there, see how it goes. But of course, if you have any questions about your Optima projector, whether it be the uh, GT1080 Darby, HD26, HD141, HD142, HD27, etc. Please put it in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.